Nick Neil, thanks very much for speaking to us here at entertainment.ie. Uh, Neil, first off, you've worked for many years as a music journalist yourself, mm. but what's it like being on, on that side of the interview? Are you comfortable being the Funny subject? Enough, it's much harder on this side. I always thought it'd be really easy. You know when you sit there interviewing people, you think, God, they've got an easy job. All they have to do is waffle. I've got to think <laughs> up all the interesting questions. But actually, um, you see, coming up with coherent and articulate answers about things that sometimes you haven't thought about nearly half as deeply as the person <laughs> asking you is, is um, quite difficult, and I'll be quite happy to get back onto the other side of the microphone. So you want to sit here, do you want to switch sides for a while, yeah, perhaps? Yeah, could. I could ask you about your career <laughs> as an as online journalist. Um, if you told the 25 years ago or so, if you told that version of Neil McCormick that one day a film would be made about him in the music business, what do you think he would have thought about that or said? He would have said, of course. Of course. <laughs> if somebody had said to time. me, I'm going to make a, one day there'll be a film about you, I'd have said, yeah, of course. You know, uh, I would never have guessed it would be a comedy. <laughs> right. And uh, Nick, what was it about this story that you think attracted you to it? Because it, it was, the story was an everyman tale. It was about the notion, the journey, an attempted journey uh, towards rock stardom, which ended in failure. And that seemed to be more applicable to most people's daily um, not cognizance of that world, uh, both from young and old. We've all tried in various points in our life to achieve things that we haven't done. Um, and it seemed to me that that story was a really great way of dealing with those themes in a society that's obsessed with the notion of success. Yeah. Uh, in, a, in a world which is completely about now instant fame, where you just add the hot water and suddenly you're there. <laughs> this was a story which actually showed how ridiculously difficult that journey can be, and you better be prepared. And it's a big shout out to all people who've, all bands that have failed. Yeah, exactly. And I'm, in, when dealing with comedies like this, especially comedies about music and about rock bands and things like that, uh, it must be quite difficult to, to sort of stray away and not verge on Spinal Tap territory, which I think is like the godfather of the films along these lines. Yeah, Did you ever have to sort of check yourself and make sure you weren't, you know? Wow. Well, you see, there's a lot of great films, like, you know, The Anvil was a great film as well about the whole notion of rock stupidity. Mm. There's, you know, there's fantastic documentaries and we've all seen them. You know, this, yeah, it's a music film, but it's a, mo it's a, it's a, mo it's a movie about two, it's about the relationship between two men. It's about the relationship between two brothers. It's about family, it's about trust, it's about betrayal. It's, it's about all those things. But most importantly, to be honest with you, it's a comedy. It's a, yeah. it's a romp, it's a story. It's like this, this event happened, we used the event, we've tried to co you know, co co uh, bring it together into some kind of coherent story. And um, it's, you know, it's supposed to entertain people, it's supposed to make you laugh. Yeah, yeah. And music is obviously very central to this film for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. um, Neil, what, how, did you have any degree of control over the, sort of the, <laughs> the music that the band were playing? No, I had no, no. degree of control <laughs> over anything. <laughs> you know, I was the least important person on a film. I'm less important than the clapperboard guy. <laughs> um, I, I gave, I nice wrote a book, mm -hmm. they took it, <laughs> they ran with it, uh, they turned it into something else. You know, the thing is that, that this book, this film doesn't replace my book. My book exists, it's there to be read, it tells my story the way I uh, would want it to be told. You could probably find the music online, you seem to be able to find everything else online. This uh, tells, it, tells a version of the story as a more succinct and comedic narrative that works in its own right. And, uh, you know, I'm, it, it's just, it's, this is my life in a parallel universe. I don't get to be, I still don't get to be a rock star for some reason, but <laughs> but I do get some good lines, I get some good girls, and I get played by Ben Barnes. Nice haircut as well. Yeah. And yeah, importantly, he gets played by Ben Barnes. I mean, you know, <laughs> Who would like that? Exactly. Um, but just going back to the music, where did you, like I said, it's obviously a very central piece of this movie. Uh, how much thought went into that? Oh gosh, that, that's, that was almost uh, uh, almost 150 mm, percent. Because if that doesn't work, it just falls. Yeah, I mean, just even before you start, shoot, way before you start actually turning over on a movie, on a music film, mm. you do the music. So you're recording and putting, laying everything down and making all those creative decisions. And you're making, I used to call it the music script, it was just a musical journey for the movie. Mm. You know, how the band started, what they were like, pre-punk, punk, post-punk, post what were they like as <laughs> new pretenders, what were they like as, as, as stadium rock. And I wanted that musical journey to kind of show the, mm. the way that people changed in the 80s and how music developed. So that was a really important part of it. 
and to take some of the elements of what Neil had done, but not very many, to be honest with you, taking some of the lyrics and actually just developing that. And then also I wanted to make sure that I got the stuff about you too correct. Yeah, you know, I yeah. wanted the stuff in Larry's mum's kitchen to be correct. I wanted the stuff to be when they played high, you know, as hype, uh, as the hype, uh, they played street missions, you know. Mm. And it was quite funny when we went to get the music for street missions, the Edge was like, I, we, I, we don't even have it. We don't even know where it is. Did, did we record that? And they were, everyone was scrabbling around. So the music producer had to give it to, um, uh, a transcribed music track. It was on YouTube. They were the, the early YouTube were on YouTube. Oh, and someone had to sit down with a pen and someone paper. Someone had to sit down, down with a pen yeah. and paper and actually write it out <laughs> musically so that we could then re record it. Yeah. Because they'd lost it. And so, you know, it was really great to be able to do that and, and to give a little bit of rock history as part yeah. of, the, of the movie. And was it difficult to coax out the rock and roll swagger from the, from the cast? And who was, who was best yeah. at that? <laughs> When you put attractive men, young men, in tight trousers and you give, strap a guitar to their, to their <laughs> Comes waist naturally. and you give them a great haircut and, they're, and, they're, and, you, and you give them 500 screaming girls in the audience, trust me, you don't need to do very much, <laughs> all right? They're, they're going to give it everything yeah. they've got. And those two boys, you know, we all pretended to be rock stars as kids. Mm. Some of us took it to some conclusions. <laughs> some of us, you know, just stayed in, our, in, in front of our bedroom mirror. Yeah. Uh, these guys, they were the real deal. And just uh, one final question. Um, this film, one of the things the film will, will be remembered for, obviously, is the last cinematic performance by Pete Postlethwaite. Uh, what memories will you take from, from working with him? Just, uh, just an extraordinary level of, uh, of, of uh, endearing truth and honesty and that Pete uh, brought to the proceedings and the way that Pete delivered those, that speech about fame, about the nature of fame. Yeah. And uh, uh, you know, that was written for him. We were cognizant of the actor Pete playing the character yeah, Pete yeah. in that moment and talking about the nature of success you know, Pete was never interested in a career in that sense. He mm. was he was an actor. He just found it. Yeah. He worked, you know, mm. and career a career was secondary. He didn't plot it or plan it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it was a very emotional time for everybody working with him. Some great memories, nonetheless. Some great yeah. memories, and we honestly, all of us feel incredibly honoured that he was part of the movie. I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, gentlemen, I have to wrap it up there. It's a great pleasure speaking to you. Thank you yeah, very thank much. You very Take much. care now. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you very much.